Hey guys, Isabel here, and today I want to give you some encouragement, and I also want to talk about the immune system and some really uh, wonderful ways that you can build your immune system up. And actually, there is really one phenomenal way that you can keep your immune system strong, and that's what I want to talk about today. So if you're just jumping on, um, please let me know that you're here and let me know that you can see me and hear me clearly because I'm going to jump right into it. So first I want first I want to talk about the immune system and what you can do to keep your immunity really really strong and then we're going to jump into God's Word and I'm going to give you some scripture verses that I pulled this morning some scripture verses that I, I meditated on that I prayed about and then I am really praying bring you peace during any challenging times right whether it's now or in the future during a time of illness or during a time of a loved one's illness right I really want to go into God's word and give you some scripture verses that I think are going to be really, really helpful. But the first thing I want to do is I want to talk about the immune system because the reality is all of us are exposed to so many viruses and bacterias and dangerous substances all day long, every single day, no matter what time of the year it is, no matter where we live, we are exposed to so many things on a daily basis. And the best way that we can combat those things and the best way that we can overcome those things is to keep our bodies really, really strong. So I tell people that there is there are no guarantees. Like I'm someone that's that's very healthy and I follow all the principles that I teach, but there's no guarantees that I'm not going to get sick and be exposed to things. But what I can do is I can create such a foundation in my body that I have more of a, let's call it fighting chance, right? So my body is now ready to fight off whatever it is that I'm exposed to. And the reality is, is you are exposed to things every single day. So imagine this, imagine that you had a cup of water and a cup of gasoline. And let's say the cup of water was a good, healthy body, one that was not very acidic, was more alkaline, one where someone was eating a lot of fruits and vegetables that contained a lot of antioxidants, that would be the glass of water or the cup of water or container of water. Now, if you had a container of gasoline, let's say that was someone who was eating a lot of processed foods, a lot of sugar, maybe not taking care of themselves, maybe not sleeping, um, just really putting themselves in a vulnerable position. Now, let's say that I lit a match and I took that match and I put it in the container of water, what would happen? Well, there would be some smoke and there would be some aftermath, but really the water would be able to take that out, take out the fire very, very quickly. But what if you put that little match in the container of gasoline? Now you would have a full-fledged fire, right? Where all it was was just a small match. And if you put it in gasoline, now you have a fire. So I give that example to a lot of clients when I tell them you want your body to be that cup of water where things can come in and it can just tackle them and squash them very, very quickly. So I will tell you that the best way to set up your immune system to win is to give up sugar, specifically processed sugar. So if you're following the first four weeks of the New Life Promise Plan, you already know that the first four weeks, the goal is to detox from processed sugar and to really eliminate all of those processed sugars that you may have been having. So that's truly one of the best ways to set your immune system up so that it has a fighting chance against any viral infection or bacterial infection. Again, I'm not suggesting that that means you're not going to get sick because if you live in this world, you're going to. So a lot of people have said to me, Isabel, this is the first time that I've been able to give up sugar. Meanwhile, I have tried so many times before, and this is the first time I've been able to give up sugar following the New Life Promise Plan. Now, why is that? Well, I believe it's for two reasons. The first reason and the most important one is this is the first time that you are giving up processed foods and processed sugar using God as your strength. So many of you have said to me, I've tried this diet, I've tried this diet, I've tried this diet, and they never worked. 
but for some reason, New Life Promise is working for me. It is because you have invited the Lord into your journey. And the truth is, you probably couldn't give up sugar in your own strength. There are a lot of things I can't do in my own strength, but you can do them in God's strength. It's just amazing because so many people have said to me, you know, I have over a hundred pounds to lose, or I have 50 pounds to lose. And that is really sometimes very daunting when you think about it, but in your own strength, those are daunting and difficult, but God's strength is just above and beyond anything we can imagine. So that's why this is the first time for many people they've been able to give up sugar where they haven't been able to before. The second reason I truly believe is because you're eating foods that you enjoy. So many of you have said, I'm really enjoying the foods on the New Life Promise Plan. I really, really like the meals. So if you like the food that you're eating, then you are less likely to run to the cookies and the cakes and the processed foods, right? Because you are enjoying the food that you're eating. And that's very, very important because many times people try and lose weight or they try and get healthy and they torture themselves in the process, right? They're like drinking shakes or eating these like, you know, little processed, you know, diet foods that they think are good for them and they're not enjoying it. So then they're just thinking about when's the next time I can have a cookie? When's the next time I can have sugar? When's the next time I can just, you know, eat whatever I want. You have to absolutely enjoy what you're doing and what you're having. So what I wanted to say to you today is I really wanted to encourage you because there is no better time than now to really take control of your health and give up sugar, start eating foods that you know are better for you, uh, stop having the processed foods. There is no better time than now. And I think we're really, really seeing that and how important it is to keep our immune system strong. So if you have started on the meal plans and maybe things have not gone as planned, it's okay. You know, this is life and things are going to happen. But I really encourage you, encourage you to either go back to the beginning and start from the beginning, even though I don't really think you have to, you can start right where you left off. But truly the New Life Promise meal plans in those first four weeks are designed to help you release that addiction from sugar and create a more healthy environment in your body, build up your immune system so that you are able to fight off all of the germs, viruses, bacteria, and things that all of us are exposed to on a daily basis, no matter what, no matter what. I mean, many times I hear people say like, well, you know, my kids go to daycare, so I'm exposed to a lot of germs. Well, there are plenty of children in the supermarket, right, that are touching the, um, touching the shopping cart, right, and you're touching the shopping cart. So I don't really believe like, okay, sure, like if you're on an airplane, there are more germs and it's contained. I get all that. But truly, I mean, we are all exposed to so many things on a daily basis and you want to give your body that fighting chance. So if you are someone who just kind of needed that, uh, I don't know, little bit of encouragement today. I really want to give that to you because I see a lot of people talking about the immune system and you should take this vitamin and you should take this vitamin and all of those things are great. There are many supplements that are wonderful, but they're not going to be as effective if you put them in a body that is uh, you know, has a lot of inflammation and a body that is just filled with processed sugar and a body that is not in a good place. So yes, all those things are helpful, but first and foremost, I want you to create a really good foundation for your body. And one of the best things that you can do is to give up sugar. And I just pray that all the tools that we have given you will be helpful to you during this time as you do that. Again, there has been, there has never been in a better time than now to truly, truly start taking care of your health. So now I know that in times of illness and in times of, um, you know, 
increased, um, let's say, awareness that, you know, there's a lot of uh, illness and viruses and bacterias. I know that with that can come worry and anxiety. And I will tell you that that also will bring your immune system down. So chronic stress will actually release a lot of cortisol in your body and will bring down your immune system. And that's the last thing you want to do. And I completely understand that there is a lot to be worried about and a lot to be stressed about. But the Lord commands us not to worry in his word. And that's what I wanted to share with you today. I wanted to share some scripture verses with you. And I know that right now a lot of people may have a little bit more time on their hands uh, because maybe they're not going out as much. So I really want to encourage you to be in God's word during this time because that is where you're going to find your strength. That is where you're going to find your peace. And that is where you're going to find your encouragement. So I just want to share some of those scripture verses with you. I wrote them all down and I put them all together. So the first one is Matthew 6 verses 25 through 27. Therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life. And that is literally to me when I hear it, a command. The Lord telling me, do not be anxious about your life, Isabel. And what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you, this is so important, this is so important right here. And which of you by being anxious can add a single hour to his span or life? So that's what I really wanted to focus on is that our worry and our anxiety actually is not changing the situation any. It's actually making it worse, right? Because you're releasing cortisol into your body, you're actually bringing your immune system down. So by worrying and being anxious, you're actually making the situation worse. Now, I want to describe to you two very different versions of how you can respond during difficult times. The first one is by being worried and anxious. Oh my word, um, there's so much going on in the world and I have to do this and I have to do this and what if I get sick and what if my, you know, my parent gets sick? I totally understand. My dad is 82 years old, God bless him. And I want to do everything I can to keep him very, very healthy, right? So that's version one is, and now I have to do this and now I'm gonna go to the grocery store and, and what if someone gets sick? That's the first version. The next one is being proactive and doing the things that we know we should do during difficult times. That may be, I make a list of all the things that I potentially need. Like I just made a list and I just sent my husband to Walmart and he is going to get, oh, I hope and I pray that he can get the things on that list. And you are going to be prepared, but you're not going to be worried and anxious. Do you see the difference? Being prepared would be, okay, these are the items that I need. Um, maybe it would not be a good idea for uh, my dad to do his own food shopping at this time because he is 82 years old. Let me get his list. Let me go over to his house and help him with whatever he needs. Do you see the difference? The difference is you're getting the same thing done, but this one is getting it done full of anxiety and worry and fear, and this one is getting it done in a way that is proactive that is smart, right? We wanna do what we can do. We're gonna let God do the rest and not having a spirit of fear. And I actually wrote that one as well. Second Timothy 1, 7. For God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline. And I love that verse during this time because we're not going to be fearful, but we are going to have the self-discipline to do the things that we need to do. Give up sugar, set up our homes in the right way, maybe um, not have our children go out and have play dates and do all kinds of things, right? So what are the things that you need to do at this time so that you set up yourself, your family, your ready, but not from a place of fear? So when I tell people, you know, don't worry, don't be anxious. I'm not saying don't be responsible and don't be proactive because I'm doing that. I am making sure that our family is prepared. I am making sure that I put things in place so that my 82 year old father is prepared and ready and we are protecting his health. But it doesn't mean that I am trusting in the fact that God 
is all powerful and in control. I will not put my faith on what someone else says or on things or on things that I can do. I will keep all of my faith in the Lord and his promises, which is why I just truly encourage you to be in the word during this time. And then Matthew 6, 34 says, therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day it's, is its own trouble. And you know, this one kind of made me laugh when I was reading it this morning because for the past couple of weeks, I've been a little bit, I'll say worried, right? Because I'm human and this happens about a trip that I was supposed to take to Miami with um, some other business owners. And my concern was that not that I was going to get sick because I really feel very confident about my immune system. I feel very confident about my children's immunity. But again, I keep mentioning my dad because he is older and he already has some like breathing lung things that you know we need to get handled right now. So I was just going back and forth, back and forth, like, do I go on this trip? And then I come home and I don't want to not be able to see my dad, which I see all the time. Um, so I, I just kept going through this in my mind. Should I go? Should I not go? Should I go? Should I not go? And you know what? Now everything's canceled. Now everyone's not going anywhere. So Matthew, it's, you know, so Matthew 634 says, do not be anxious about tomorrow for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. I had nothing to even be anxious about, right? There's no, there's no question now, I'm not going anywhere. It's like, God knows what he's doing. And we just need to put all of our faith in him. I mean, who knows if during a time of illness, which I am praying morning, noon, and night for everyone, everyone who might be sick right now and everyone who's going through a challenging time. So I do not want to make light of that at all because that is my family's prayer right now. But who knows if for some of us, who are doing our best to take care of ourselves, staying home, we really can count it all as joy, as it says in the first chapter of James, and think to ourselves, you know what? Maybe I needed a little bit more time with my spouse. Maybe I needed a little bit more time with my children. Maybe I needed a little bit more time to sit and read God's word. Maybe I just haven't had the opportunity to have a lot of prayer time lately, and now I do. Can we count it all as joy? Again, as it says in that first chapter of James, and let our faith be strengthened and truly trust that what God is doing is, is perfect because it is. So let me share some other scriptures with you. Um, it says it again in Luke 12, 25, and which of you by being anxious can add a single hour to a span of life? I mean, just think about that over and over again. Now, I will say that what I will count as joy is the fact that currently some of the, um, you know, viruses that are going on now um, are not affecting children in a really negative way. And I have been praising the Lord for that. I have been thanking him that our children are safe and that our children are, um, you know, their little bodies are able to fight off all of the, you know, some of the viruses that are they're being exposed to now. And I truly, truly thank the Lord for that. I am. I'm so grateful to him. So really find what you can thank God for. You know, let's thank him for the Internet. I mean. Yes, the internet can be tricky sometimes, but, you know, praise the Lord, all of us here inside the New Life Promise family have been brought together by the internet. That is like just amazing. I, yesterday was my dad's birthday and we actually went out to a, we went to Brook Green Gardens in South Carolina, if anybody's familiar with it. And it's just an outdoor, like, just um, arboretum and um, flower garden. And we just chose to be outdoors. And I actually met a woman there who is a, I don't know if she's a New Life Promise member or not, but she recognized me and we talked. And I told her, uh, I said, it is, this is truly a dream come true. And for me, it's a dream come true. And I, and now that I'm thinking about it, like that wouldn't be possible without the internet. So let's praise the Lord for the internet that some of our children, now my kids are homeschooled, so they're used to being um, at home, but a lot of kids have had school canceled and they have the internet and are able to use it. So I just want you to do the best you can to find something during this troubled time, troubling time to praise and thank the Lord. And it the list will be long. The list will be very, very long. 
So for those of you who are having a hard time not being anxious, let me give you a few verses that um, I pray will bring you peace. Again, I want you to remember 2 Timothy 1.7, for God has not given us a spirit of fear. Please remember that because I hear a lot of Christians say, well, I'm just like this. You're not. You're not. Your heavenly father did not give you a spirit of fear. I don't want you to believe that you're just like this. No, you are made in his image and he did not create you to have a spirit of fear. So John 14, 27, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. He has given us his peace. Do not let your heart be troubled or afraid. We have nothing to be afraid of. We have nothing to be afraid of. Again, I am not discrediting the severity of some people's illnesses and the severity of what might be going on or the severity of what we might be exposed to. I don't want you to think that that's what I'm doing. But what I am saying is that we do not need to be fearful. As Christians, we do not need to be fearful. Fearful, And I also want to encourage you to be peaceful so that your non-Christian friends will see that and ask you, how can you be so calm during this time? And there you will have an open door to share the gospel with someone and to share Jesus's love and peace with someone during this difficult time. You may even have the opportunity to pray with someone who maybe wasn't open to prayer before, but now they are because they are seeking peace in their heart. And now you have an opportunity to do that. So please, if you are walking around in fear or afraid, I want you to remember that. I I want you to go to scripture and remember those verses, but also I want you to remember what we are showing the world. And if we show them peace, they will wonder where we got that peace. And our only answer will be, we got it from Jesus Christ. So I have um, one last verse that I want to share with you. Psalm 56, three, when I am afraid, I put my trust in you because look, only Jesus was perfect. We are not perfect. But when we are afraid, because we're humans and we will be, we will put our trust in him. And that's what I want you to remember. Because look, I am fearful plenty. I am fearful plenty because I am human. But very, very quickly, I remember those promises that we have in scripture. And I remember that I am not in control. It doesn't matter what kind of list I give to my husband to buy things at Walmart. I am not in control. Again, it doesn't mean that I'm not prepared and I don't do the things that I need to do. But many of you know, and you have read in the New Life Promise Manual, where I tell you, control what you can control, what you can control and let God control the rest. Let me say that again. Control what you can control and let God control the rest. So before I jump off, what can you control? You can control what you put into this beautiful temple that God has given you. You can control whether or not you put processed sugar into your body, which will then bring your immune system down and make it more difficult for you to fight off anything, any virus, any bacteria that you may come across. That is something that you can control. What else can you control? You can control your prayer life. You can control how much you read scripture and meditate on those verses. Those are the things that we can control. But the way that this world responds and the things that happen in this world, a lot of it we absolutely cannot control. We also can't control the actions of others. We can't control the fear in other people, but we can control our own actions and our own fear. So if at any time you need some extra prayer, you know that you can ask us. I am praying for you and this community on a daily basis. I would say multiple times a day. I see your prayer requests. I honor all of them. I write them down during the day. I go into the community. I check and see how you're all doing. Um, and the Lord has been faithful. Let's just say that we bring our 
concerns to him, our health concerns, our worries. We bring it all to him. We lay it at the foot of the cross and God has been so faithful. So I truly pray that this has been an encouragement to you. I want, you know, those of us that are on here now, I am going to end in prayer and I truly hope and pray that this has brought you some peace today and some encouragement and truly helped you to see that the only one that is in control is our great God. And what a beautiful thing that is. How terrible would it be if we were in control? Oh boy, we would just mess it all up. But how great is it that our great God is in control? So if you would join me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for this opportunity that we have today to come together as brothers and sisters in Christ, even if it is through the internet, Lord, something that you have blessed us with and given us this opportunity to come together as a family to pray for each other during this difficult time. I truly pray that your peace come upon our family members, our immediate family members, and the people of this world. Lord, and I ask that you open up doors for us during this time to share your word and to share the gospel, Lord, and to pray for others and that those who may not know you, Lord, that in this difficult time that they may come to know you, Lord. Lord, we love you. We praise you. And we want to honor you with our lives. I pray these words in Jesus' name. Amen. I love you so much, New Life Promise family, and I will see you all soon. Bye-bye. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please click here to watch more videos that will help you live a peaceful and healthy life. You may also want to subscribe so you don't miss any new videos. I upload new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, so be sure to turn on the notification bell so you're notified when I post something new. If you want to learn more about how to live the best, healthiest, and most fulfilling life available to you, go to IsabelDPrice.com today. I'll see you soon.